On our first cruise, we thoroughly enjoyed the main dining room and ate at no specialty restaurants. This time, we decided to try out the unlimited dining package. For us, it seemed like a great deal. It would be the last time our five-year-old would be able to enjoy it for free. Kids six to 12 need to pay, but it's a nicely discounted rate. We bought it on sale and before the prices for the unlimited dining package went up. All in, with gratuities and tax, it was less than $500 for the three of us. Good luck ever buying it at that price again. On our next cruise, the same deal costs over $680. And with a six-year-old, it would be nearly $780. As soon as we got on the ship, we wanted to make our specialty dining reservations. With that package, you can't make any reservations until you're actually on the ship, and you have to go to a restaurant to make them. Once at any restaurant, you can make reservations for all the other restaurants except Izumi Hibachi. For that, you have to go to Izumi and wait in line there. When I purchased the unlimited dining package, I kind of thought of it as the deluxe beverage package, except for specialty restaurants. Everything free, all the time. After I purchased it, Royal Caribbean changed the rules for a la carte restaurants, and then I started reading the fine print. A one-time credit of $20 for a la carte restaurants, that doesn't seem like much, $15 surcharges, prefix menus, cover charges. I was beginning to wonder if I had just purchased a glorified coupon discount package, which is nothing at all like the drink package. Well, I can clear that up and I'm happy to say it's kind of sort of exactly like the drink package. Long story short, we ate at almost every restaurant and owed nothing every single time. The one exception for us would have been the Izumi Hibachi. When we made a reservation, it was very clear that there would be a $15 upcharge for each adult or person. Still not sure about that, which we were totally fine with, but we never made it to that reservation due to a last minute conflict. The $20 limit at a la carte restaurants also scared me a bit because I wasn't sure which restaurants were a la carte and which ones were not. It wasn't clear, there's no list anywhere. Ultimately, on Wonder, it's just Playmakers. And the $20 limit is actually a $40 limit because there's two adults. And I have a feeling that if you went over that $40 limit, you probably wouldn't even face a surcharge. At one restaurant, we ordered champagne, which was not included in the ultimate beverage package because it was more than $15, but it never showed up on our bill. So the waiters definitely have some discretion on what you end up paying, which in our case, every single time was zero. And if you think I'm a cheapskate because I crossed out all the tips, we tipped in cash in addition to the gratuity that was already paid for. We love the unlimited dining package and trying all the different restaurants. The food was great from the lobster roll at Hooked to the ribs at Mason Jar. We almost never had anything that was bad. The only bad food that we did have was actually at Playmakers, soggy fries, bad nachos, but we ate there twice and I love the wings. My wife and I both agreed that 150 Central Park was by far and away our favorite dining experience, which leads me to some of the downsides of our unlimited dining package experience. The wait staff makes up a significant portion of your dining experience. While I love the food at Hooked, the service was awful. Our waiter was incredibly slow, and it looked like he was only waiting on us. Another table in a different section came in 10 or 15 minutes after us, completed their meals, and left before we even received our food. Slow and inconsistent service happened at several of the specialty dining restaurants we went to. Some waiters were clearly overworked. At the Italian restaurant, Giovanni's, it looked like there was only one waiter for the entire restaurant. On several nights, we longed for the speed of the main dining room. Another downside of the unlimited dining package was the hassle of having to book all your reservations the instant you get on the ship. You can't pre-book them. Getting on a cruise ship should be a relaxing and joyous experience. And being in a rat race to get an Azumi Hibachi reservation exactly when you want it is anything but that. So our conclusion of the unlimited dining package Immediately after the cruise, we both agreed we wouldn't be buying it again for our next cruise. Would we ever buy it again? Maybe. While it was a good value, the simplicity of not having to have any reservations and the efficiency of the main dining room was a more relaxing experience. I don't ever want to have two-hour dinners. <laughs>